I brought my agent to my show to main room. Oh yeah, how'd it go? I bought my dick off. Farting in regular yoga class, fine. Farting in hot yoga is... First of all, just want to touch on that. Not fine to fart in regular yoga class. Do you know how many shows I've done with people I didn't want to fucking see? I don't. A million? All of my bridesmaids are wearing potato sacks. I don't give a fuck. I wish I was worse when I drank so I'd stop. Boy, the dicks I've sucked for literally nothing. Ah, oh, here we go again. Welcome to Slab! Oh yeah. Welcome to Slobs, everybody. We're back. We're better than ever. Post Thanksgiving, I blew out my vocal cords eating turkey. Did you just check me out? You Get gave over me, yourself. You gave, you gave me the elevator eyes. Full. Okay, it made me okay. self conscious and then a little bit flattered. I was like, "Did I think you checked out my boobs?" Okay, before we started. Laura was wearing a whole vest, and though she had talked about how she was going to take some layers off, I had my head in my purse looking for ADHD medication, so I turned around, and it looked like you did a full outfit change, <laughs> and I had no idea, and I was like, oh, well, hello, and I guess I did, look, I think I tried to read, I'm still doing it, I keep trying to look at your shirt. It says Montana. Montana, remember when we went to Montana? Yeah, of course I do. Listen. It was recent. Um, it was, it was fun. It was a month and a half ago. Yeah, stay Stay big sky, Montana. I am so sorry to Stay everyone listening, big sky. hearing my voice. This is grating. We have a guest today. <clears throat> we sure do. It's Kristen Doty. Am I saying your last name right, yes. by the way? Uh, I yes, just, you are my friend. You should I know. Be. <laughs> I was, it's my good friend, Kristen. I just, as I said it out loud, was like, is that just how I said it in my head this whole time? And I have no idea how to say your name. Wow. Yeah, wow. I said it that way in my head. But I had you introduce her because I was like, I might be wrong. Yeah, I just had a full-blown panic of, <laughs> do I not even know my friend's name? I, Thank you I so much for scratchy. joining us. Thanks for having me. Do I sound a little scratchy, too? You? I like... No. Well, even I if you do... Choked, like, on... A, <laughs> not, not on a big dick, although that would have been nice, on a popcorn <laughs> kernel last night. And I feel like my throat was raped by, like, a beehive. Wow. <laughs> Like the esophagus. I'm is now like choking being on being alive. At. That's dude. Popcorn kernels are the worst. Where yeah. you ever? I mean, do you still eat popcorn? No, my dad had to give my mom the Heimlich once though because she was choking but, on wait, popcorn. You gave up popcorn. It's like the most random. Oh, yeah, Laura is like on. She's like a strict. She sticks to her. Don't eat this. Don't eat that. She's got a strict oh, the glu- eating the glucose thing. I'm in. I'm in recovery, and I don't eat my binge foods. And popcorn was one of my binge foods, oh. so I don't eat popcorn. A serving of popcorn is like two handfuls of popcorn, which is so offensive to me. Yeah, and oh, not and a thing that also I also something ever I never eat. needed to know based on my no. popcorn eating behavior. Pop- I I switched to popcorn for my late night snack over pasta, That's, and it feels like it's helping me not want to die in the morning. That's you used to just eat pasta bit, in the just, middle of the night. Yes, like full on. I totally understand because that. I live alone. Like no one's <laughs> there to judge me. But then I wake up and I'm like ten times more starving. Yeah, and apparently those carbs are like not good for my blood sugar blah, you know blah. update on me I, I stopped eating snacks and for the <laughs> like first couple weeks yeah, yeah. Wild, and for the horrible. first couple weeks it was awful and now it's awesome you like you feel fine I eat Were dinner you? and then I'm fine and you're not hungry 20 minutes I'm later not, like I am. I am hungry 20 minutes later but I'm not hungry four hours later oh. I'm always hungry right after I eat and I think it might just be like fear i don't know <laughs> like based. i feel it in my stomach yeah but it's just always been like, it's like that what if that's the last time i ever but it eat? passes i don't know that's wild do you feel like you went through uh snack withdrawals like a drug addict going through drug withdrawals um yeah i do yeah we look i like the outfit change again now that's i'm kinda, looking at your boobs <laughs> i know that's it's uh, popcorn all and part of my plan <laughs> mozzarella cheese sticks are the foods for me that i ha- will never stop eating do you like string cheese I love string cheese, but they're the like near death foods. Yeah. Like I, like I constantly have them in my throat. Oh, I see. Where it's also, I just, that? I've switched to popcorn from not switched, but I'll choose it over <laughs> like greasy chips, which I feel like is such a trendy, like switch to popcorn. The same as like have a handful of almonds. It's like, fuck you. <laughs> yeah. a handful it's of almonds. theoretically a healthy snack. And in moderation, it's a healthy snack. What isn't healthy is like going to the movies and eating the two the large bucket. tubs of popcorn because you get a free refill on that. But I mean, it's not really free. It's going to cost you, <laughs> you know, and I would eat the two buckets like I would be almost done with a bucket by the time the actual movie 
started that's I it's just gnarly i felt before. sick i felt like shit i just couldn't stop eating it because that like salty crunchy combo i just like i'm powerless i get you i used to put do you guys do you ever have snow caps the little chocolate i had them with yeah. little white sprinkles i would pour those in the popcorn that's awesome so it was like chocolate and salty that i once dated a guy great. who was like a regular at the movies he loved going to the movies mm-hmm. and he had this weird rule of not he would not touch the popcorn before the movie started. He's like, I don't eat it before the oh, movie no. starts. That's really I smart. I stop eating it when the movie yeah, starts. Yeah, I was like, well, bad news, it's going to be gone. Yeah. I think that's being, I think that's, I think that's really smart and that's being responsible because, yeah, it's gone. By yeah, the time no, the I think starts. he's halfway through our relationship started to resent me because he'd go to eat the popcorn. It was like at the bottom. Well, yeah, of the so you're sharing you just, popcorn with him and the poor guy the won't start first, it. And then you start drinking the wine that you brought in. The wine that you brought in. Wait, red or I, white? What are you bringing white. in? Oh my God. And I'm so not above bringing my own wine. There are only a handful of theaters that allow you to like go get a drink and bring it in. Yeah. Like some of them have bars now, the one which is at nice. Shitty Walk but... will not allow you to bring city walk will not allow you to bring your <laughs> actual you drink in <laughs> yeah so i just bring a big purse full of like mini bottles that's so funny mini bottles mm-hmm. you are a divorced mother 100 <laughs> like, that's so funny when i went with my mom as a kid we would go to the gas station beforehand and she would get us snacks and put them in her purse and then we'd go in and i was like how big can the difference in price really be? As a kid, I was like, are they that much more expensive? And now as an adult, I'm like, $15 <laughs> for a for cracker water? jacks? Yeah. Are you fucking with me? Dude, I lit, so I grew up in Alaska and we used to, because you wear like big coats and snow pants and our family would go to the movie and we would put full size bags of Doritos. <laughs> we had like full Subway sandwiches size. in our coats. Just like a two liter bottle of Coke in our legs. <laughs> and then somebody told me, I don't know where I heard this, but someone who had worked at a movie theater was like, yeah, the movie theater doesn't care. You're allowed to bring in your own stuff. No, you're not. And I was like, I'm just hoarding They're things. They're like 16 They've years checked old my making before. minimum wage. They do not give a shit. Yeah. Um, but my luck is like I'd get the one person who takes their job too seriously. Because that's who I was. The hall I'd be like, monitor. whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> You're the fun police. Trying to sneak in a seltzer? I don't think so. Have this you is had Century your, 16. Haven't you had your bag checked at the movies before? No. I've had my bag searched so at the movies fi. before. Oh, that's such a Wisconsin. People are bringing in whole blocks of cheese. They're like, <laughs> not on our watch. Now, after Dave this and podcast airs, the- like AMC is going to be like clear bags only. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I went to the movies. That's with why. Dave this weekend, we went to the mall at Redondo Beach and they had a carnival mall. in the mall and we bought tickets and we went on a ride. We went to the movie and then we ate at the food court and then we went on a ride in the parking lot and then we went home. That's a it's day. It's so like Greece of you. <laughs> like wow. It was really Sandy. fun. We had a great day. Parking Precious. lot carnivals. Those are my I jam. ruined the ride for Dave accidentally because... <laughs> So I, I'm a season pass holder at Six Flags. I love a good ride. You oh, know, so you're a snob about and the tilt to world. Look, no, <laughs> I look up the death statistics because it makes me feel safe. The only thing that makes the rides fun is knowing that I won't die on them. <laughs> and so right before, right before I go on the ride, I'll be like, no one has ever died on this ride. I looked this ride up and no one has ever died. I'm autistic and no one has ever died on <laughs> this ride. And with this one, the death statistics for like carnival rides are like so bad. high because they're just traveling carnies bringing the rides through town. Like, there's no they don't some care. WD 40 on it. No, like, they yeah. don't like inspect them. No, they don't care, dude. I and so, just... right before the ride took off, I was like, the death statistics for these are really high. There's no inspection. <laughs> and, and Dave, Dave, like, did not enjoy the ride at all. That's <laughs> hilarious you said that right as it's taking off there was a parking lot carnival they always popped up in alaska also in the winter time which seems way more dangerous somehow yeah there was some ride where like the things lift up and they spin and there's a very small sign in the car of like the people who are heavier should be on the inside because when it starts the centrifugal force makes you like lean over and yeah i went to this park with my two friends amber and tia love them very heavy ladies, bigger gals. <laughs> and this was like middle school. I was very little. Yeah. And we didn't read that sign. And so I just remember being on the ride and they're like, woo! And I'm just and you're in the middle. losing air, no smoosh against the side. And I was like, this is it. This is how I go. Like yeah. I was like, 
I was like confident I was going to die in a carnival parking lot outside of a hair salon. I was yeah. like, this is, it wasn't worth it. It wasn't worth it. Well, and it's funny because when you see the rules of the rides, you're like, no one's going to stop me. And it's like, no, but like you could die. My fat boyfriend landed, <laughs> an ex-boyfriend of mine landed on me uh, on a water slide once and oh, no. I almost died. I, I mean, got it was buried by someone on a water slide. Water parks have not good death statistics. Like oh, people God. fly. Broken, we almost like flew off the I edge. Drop. We almost flew off the edge. And then when we got to the bottom, we found out that we exceeded the weight capacity because we were both being fat together on the ride. <laughs> and there just was like a teenager at the top of the slide who was not like, hey, two obese adults can't fit on our raft together on this like, ride get out there fatties <laughs> yeah, yeah we almost fucking died jesus we just brought you on here to tell you about death statistics yeah, i love it I'm, i'll talk your, about it for an hour I don't are care. you a amusement park yeah what's your disney radar uh disney uh too far i have the a universal only disney pass. adult you uh, have a you have a universal, universal. Pass? yeah it's down the street from my house it's like so easy do they have that many rides there yeah they are they that out. scary no they're awesome. <laughs> mm, I like the scary I like, ones. I like Six Flags, though, Yeah, like or whatever it's called. I can't Magic handle... Mountain. Universal, they got the Harry Potter one. They got the Jurassic yeah, Park like one. Minions, Simpsons, The Mummy. Do you get... So I love like the 3D motion rides. I've always loved those growing up, but now I'm starting to get so sick on them. Really? Like I cannot handle it. I went on the Harry Potter one in... Orlando, Florida, and I got off and I just laid on the ground. I was like, <laughs> You're like no my incredible equilibrium is off. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> this is, uh, I, I can't possibly walk down the stairs without holding the railings down. Yeah, something <laughs> happens. Old. And we're definitely yeah. at an age where like rides stop being fun for most people. Yeah. And then I just think about like the person who got me into intense rides was my dad. Mm hmm. And man, he must have just been on so much meth. He, it was just like, let's go on another coaster, kids. And he was, my dad was morbidly obese. So he'd have to sit, there's like a special row. There's a park called Bush Gardens in Tampa. There should oh, be yeah. a special row. Lots Bush of Gardens. people can't ride the rides because of morbid obesity. Yeah, but there was like a special row for like bigger people, but only up to a certain point. So there'd be like, you know, a 15 year old that works at the park just trying to jam the, the yeah the like head thing over it's just it's just we just needed to lock once yeah oh God. i mean the bravery to just be i i'm like are you're gonna die right and i'm spending the whole ride like is my dad gonna fly out of this roller coaster and he's just like Wah! oh what a maniac i like the ones where you can like like this parking lot one i could lace my arms through and like hold on to the harness like i like it where you when you have something to hold on to where it's like even if this failed, I'd like to think I yeah. could not just the lap bar. I, li I like the seatbelt like underneath the lap to the bar. Side, like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, well, I like. No. I want to be like strapped in like some a reinforcement. Car seat. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I also convinced myself with the over the head thing that like if it comes loose, I'm strong enough to hold, to hold on it to down. It. Like, yeah. No, I'm not. I'm but it's nice out. to think you are. I'm just holding on for dear life. Just gotta have high hopes, you know. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, let's transition a little bit. Like, I want to talk to you. So you have a new podcast coming out. Yes. My first one. I'm so excited. So, for you. so background, uh, I've been harassing her to start a podcast for true. maybe over a year. Chris and I became friends because we were dating guys who were friends. We, we are no up. longer dating yeah. said guys. We got out. They <laughs> we suck. Did. Uh, that's just, we don't need to go into detail. Nope. Oh, um, that's the story I want. <laughs> oh, we happened to break up at the same time, which is wild. Like That's literally weird. the same time. And then I was like, oh, thank God, because that means I can still hang out yeah. with you. <laughs> I know. I'm like, are we still friends? Okay, I, good. Oh, my God. It's, it's so can terrible. Can I call you and complain and send you screenshots of how much he sucks? Okay, yeah. great. Uh, That's such a hard thing about breakups is that usually when you break up with someone, it's like, fuck, I'm like going to miss your family. And like your pets yeah. and like, you know, yeah. I'm a like friend miss collector, the whole big time. thing around the Same. person. You you lose out on their world. Yeah. yeah I was like, I'm going to miss, like, I miss his family and I miss like three of his friends. Yeah. Same. And then like everyone Just else is kind of like, fine. Yeah. This is all right. Let's, you were nice, but you were my friend because of him. Yeah. But now you have a podcast coming out. Yes. Yes. I have so a podcast coming that's out. so exciting. What's it about? Something that said boyfriend was like, meh you probably shouldn't do it i'm like suck it that's, that's when you know that's when you yeah. know it's true love is when they're rooting against your dreams. yes yeah yeah 
Um, they're like, I'd like so, to try this. And they're like, nah, you like, won't be good no, at it. Oh, yeah, you shouldn't It'll do be that. Bad. It'll you should, fail. You should yeah. focus on doing it's, the dishes for me. Yeah, exactly. Oh, Cleaning God. up after me. Yeah. I, I love that. Like, I don't know how you're feeling, but I got out and it was just like, there was obviously the like window of breakup, sadness, whatever that anyone goes through. Yeah. But then it feels like. It's weird being like, I think that's the best thing that's ever happened to me. Totally. It's Just absolute like, music to my ears as your friend to hear you now call it, I got out. Like to talk about it that way. Because like when it happened, it was so hard and it was so sad. And I remember you driving around with a little roll of toilet paper next to you for you. your cry. <laughs> yeah, Because so I would sad. just sob in my car. I John, our producer, <laughs> had to, he's just like... <laughs> What are you doing? Should I come pick you up? Should we go for a walk? Like everyone was on like a high alert because I was a disaster. She got in her car and she had to move her little roll of toilet paper. And so now to hear her talk about it and be like, I got out. Yeah, because yeah. it's like you look back and, and you're you like, did. you escaped. And that's like the part I'm still trying to let go of is like, like being mad at myself for even being in it. You no, know. but you didn't know. You couldn't have for known. staying for staying yeah. too long. Yeah, yeah but like, you didn't. You oh, didn't stay. The too red long. flags were just waving in mine, and I'm like, no, no, no. And then you're like, I look we're so good in red, you're though. Like, yeah, <laughs> putting it on like it's really those... my color. <laughs> yeah. But I think that that's the emotionally mature thing to do is to be like, is this just my fear? Am I just afraid, or is this bad? And then once you realize that it's bad, then you leave. But that's you wait true. till you have all the information because it's not. It's not going to change. Like if you're supposed to break up with a person, you will still be supposed to break up with them in a week. Like yeah. I just would yeah. rather pause, make sure that it's what it feels like it is. And it's not and like you're emotional. Yeah. Rather than I do mean, what I was, like a lot of people do, which is five like times break up as a reaction. <laughs> Wait, what? I was broken up with five times the la- in the last seven months that we were together. And he actually left me, like broke up with me. He just kept breaking up with you. And yeah, and the last time he did it, he I'm like, no, but my last grand ditch effort, like I will write you a love letter. <laughs> I will write you a sonnet. Well, like, then that's kind of Jesus. my point is that it's so much more obnoxious to break up and then be like, wait, I made a mistake. Like yeah. wait until you're sure that you're not making a mistake. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't know, don't do it yet. Yeah, but then we broke up and I started like actually having sex with people, which was so <laughs> nice because it had been a minute. Oh, what a difference it makes. And be like, if, oh, I can fuck again. Yes. Like brought the light back into my life. So I thought, hmm, what do I love more than anything in this world? I love love and I love sex. And that's your podcast. So my podcast is Sex, Love and What Else Matters. And shout out to Jess for helping me with the title. Oh my God. Uh, that you didn't even have to say that, but yeah, uh, no, I like it. Uh, I basically harassed her into a yeah. phone call and was like, we're going to talk about this. You need to start a fucking podcast. I've been bothering her about it for so long and I'm so excited about it. Yeah. I had to get my confidence back because of, you know, said X just yeah. that, you know, people can make you feel Shitty. Like they, you just forget like what you're passionate about or I did. Yeah. Like forgetting like what made me happy to wake up and do every day. Yeah. It's easy to like get in this cycle of, at least for me, and I have a little bit of like codependent tendencies, like people pleaser. So an issue I have in relationships Same. is that like I'll kind of slide into this like what are they, what makes them happy. And I'm mm-hmm. so hyper-focused on like, running defense on their happiness. Like, yes. are they good? Are they upset? That I don't stop and go like, well, does this make me happy? I think that's the thing we do that we're like, what's going to make them feel good? And you're like, okay, but what do you want? Mm-hmm. And I love that you're now like, this is what I fucking want. Yes. And it's so much fun. And it, yeah, it was, I mean, it was challenging. I've been a guest on a po- on podcast for over a decade, but never a host. Um, were you scared? So fucking scared. And I have a co-host who's never even been a guest on a podcast before. He's just... So he... Just that was... It was cool like guy. the blind leading the blind, essentially. But it, we talk on the phone, you know, five hours a day, usually, when oh he doesn't live here. And I it was just like, this oh is... God. All we do is talk about sex and we're like super honest and vulnerable. And we tell the horror stories and the bedroom blunders and just tell each other everything. And I'm like, why aren't we doing this into a microphone? Yeah, because you know? people love that shit. Yeah. And I think it's going to be really interesting to hear the 
the very, very like raw, unfiltered male perspective. Like he's not trying to, his name's Luke and Luke does not try to like fake when he was not emotionally intelligent or when he was an asshole to an ex-girlfriend or when he like used somebody. Yeah. He's like, like he open talks about, about that. And I think it's like, yeah. Cause it, also if someone has grown through that, I think it's interesting to show the realization of, Oh, I act like this. And like now if he's at a point where he's, he's like, I realize what I was doing then, but at mm-hmm. the time I was just like getting what I want. I think that's interesting because it's easy to write off someone's behavior as like, Oh, you're just a piece of shit. Versus, yeah. like, oh, you're a human who maybe has some growing to do. Right. And then on the other side of that, just all the excuses that women make for men. Who do that. Who do no, those things. Like, just, oh, he's really busy. Or like, oh, his job it just takes up a lot of time. Like, well, he travels a lot. Yeah. Mm. And it's like, bitch, run. Run, bitch. Yeah. He's just not that into you. Exactly. <laughs> We're going to pause and take a break. And when we come back, I want to, let's, let's talk fucking horror stories we're back we're back all right i don't want to step on the toes of your podcast but i feel like why don't like we could share some horror stories do you have one you'd like to share or both (laughs) i don't know i don't know this isn't a horror story but recently i was it's just a man let me ask you guys this and this is crass have you guys started squirting more as as Jesus you get older? Christ, no. Um, it no. It ha- for me it has nothing to do with age. It has to do with how good the guy is at making it happen. Okay, so here's the thing: is I think that's probably what it is. Yeah, I think that I just have had a lot of men who aren't good at making me squirt. Yeah, who are selfish. Lovers. Yeah, and yeah. now I'm dating a guy who is not selfish. Yeah, and it's it's squirt city. Like it's a, almost problematic. Uh, how is that problematic? I mean, I'm, I'm sure just, he just, he's just high fiving himself. Like, yeah. Every time it happens, cut he's this like, clip yes. out and send it in your mail group chat. Nate, yeah. like, <laughs> yeah, check it out. Fucking moving or squirt. Squirt uh, city was actually what we were going to call our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no one take it. I'm it's tight. trademarked right now. <laughs> I'm sorry. There's cum stuck in my throat from earlier. Uh, <laughs> disgusting. I know. Uh, uh, no, the, oh, so the other day, I'm he was fucking me. I don't, I don't know why I'm telling you guys this story. Because it's fun. Because you started? Yeah. It's not even a horror oh, so story. so he wasn't even fingering you. It's just like, this were, is, yeah, okay. no, it's like, but also I see what you're saying. That like that's some, kind of more what I meant, but yeah. I have, yeah, no, there's a, a man yeah. who's good at fingering. Is That's like the secret trigger for like, yeah. it's like a, yeah, like it's almost hither. like, um, <laughs> like a, like a, a video Super game. Nintendo like code, a, you know, like, like a, up, a, up, a, down, AB. We're just like, <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, okay, listen, you're giving me a look of Is someone this even who a story? has What's an happening experience right now? the joy of a squirt, and I just want you to know that my heart goes out to you. Some people don't do it. <laughs> I thought I didn't do it. And I just want everyone who I dated before this to know I do it. She does you. it. Um, Okay, so you were having so sex. He, but he was gonna gonna come. He was pulling out because he was yeah. gonna come, you know. But I squirted as he was pulling out. And yeah. It sounded like a bucket dumped over on the floor. Like it was a like your water broke. Like a water breaking <laughs> amount of squirt. Yeah. Is that normal? Does yeah. anyone know? Yeah. Okay. It was like, absolutely, and that's where it gets sticky. Not literally. That's gross. But like, some people really don't do it. I'm feeling judged. I feel like I, you're I, judging my boyfriend. We're not judging. I'm not judging your boyfriend. You should just try to. I think everyone's capable Everyone, of squirting. Yeah. That's not true, though. You just have to try. It's probably not true, but... It's not. Practice makes perfect. But I don't know if everyone is. is. Yeah. I don't know if everyone is. Amy Shanker has a great joke about... Uh, she goes, I'm a squirter. And she's like, I'm not, but I tell every guy that so that they try harder. And it's like the funniest <laughs> shit in the world. That's amazing. Shout out to Amy Shanker. No, <laughs> don't worry. It's just a mess is all it is. As long, It's true. like, as long as you come, who cares if it's flying off like the fountains at the Bellagio or Thank not. Thank you. Um, Have you ever faked it? Not squirting, but faked squirting and just <laughs> full on piss on a guy <laughs> no, i squirted have, have i can't stop squirting. a bottle of lube you're like oh you did it <laughs> but i like i really think that's true that it's like as long as you're coming and you're happy and even honestly there are people 
like Ali Makovsky has jokes about this. Like she's never had an orgasm. That's okay too. However, Ugh. people are having sex. I feel like it puts a lot of pressure. Like the porn industry has put a lot of pressure on women to like have orgasms from like penile vaginal sex when a lot of within are like only 10 clitoral. seconds. When yeah. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. Like that's not. Like she's never had an orgasm. Does she that's not play not with her That's not fair. It's not. What? Does she never? No, she does. does. She... But she does play with her clit or whatever. I mean, I don't know. Sorry, Allie. But she yeah. has bits about, yeah, she she has a bit about how she's never had an orgasm. Here's what I... I knew a man who had never had an orgasm until he was like in his 20s. Like people are different. We're all doing That's our best. True. That's true. And I agree true. about the porn thing. I just think, especially, I don't know, maybe because I'm like older, like I'm old as fuck now and <laughs> and like really in my prime. Like I've even noticed when I'm like single and I've kissed guys if they're not kissing the way I want them to I have no qualms about literally stopping them and teaching them like I don't have time to waste I feel like that's why people talk about like hooking up with slightly older women like or the like anyone over like 35 and above is like this is the thing I've thought or like I guess probably like even just 30s is what like young 20s guys think but it's like They'll teach you like they'll go, no, no, you're doing it wrong. I'm no longer interested in pretending that I'm enjoying myself. Yeah. Just so he can feel good. Yeah. I used to do that. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, No, like early twenties, the shit of like, that feels good. And it doesn't. And then you're like, then they just keep doing that thing. Yeah, exactly. You're like, why did I like do this so that you could feel good about yourself instead of being like, actually, let me teach you like what is actually going to work. You will thank me. Because yeah. I will be happy, or if we break up, I've just taught you something to take into you your can, next relationship. You can go on and make the world a better <laughs> yes. place. What's crazy for me is I definitely faked it, and I think I didn't. I think I didn't know that I wasn't having an orgasm mm-hmm. early on because I was like, it feels good until I had an orgasm, and then I was like, Oh, oh I didn't know that your brain shuts off and that you're like, mm, you, that you like black out. Yeah. I just thought it was like, I feel really good right now. I think this is an orgasm. Totally. When I was like, you know, and yeah, and new guys post virginity and guys need to learn to be like more like clitorate, like literate in the, the clitoral the clit. sense. Yeah. yeah. I think That's that a lot of women faking it comes from, you know, people pleasing. And I yes. think that that desire comes from men putting pressure on women yes. to, Totally to climax, to climax in a certain way, to climax from having penile vaginal sex yep. or to climax in a way that pleases that, like squirting. Well, I think you know? even like deeper than that, like the systemic and it's of like, like some like, people just don't do that. You should smile more. It's just yeah. like that's right. the seed of me yeah. going, ah. Make eye contact. Yeah, yeah exactly. so sex becomes really performative. Which is, which also is fine if you're enjoying it. It's just. I guess now I'm very like, we have a goal here Yeah. <laughs> when I have sex. So the idea now of having sex and not have an orgasm is like, well, what was this for? Connection? No <laughs> thanks. But I also realized recently, so not to get like too serious or whatever, that like a lot of my sex has oddly been an avoidance of intimacy in a weird way that like, if I'm having sex with you, we can't be having a conversation right where we we're not talking and, and you realize that like oh actually i'm not that into you a hundred percent and i also think that like a lot of forms of intimacy avoidance are things that look like coming on too strong having sex right away putting all of your crazy out there quote unquote like i th- mm-hmm. and i think that men and women and other people do this where it's just like I'm going to tell him on the first date that I want kids, that I'm bipolar, that I'm this, that. And it's like, that's going to scare the shit out of anybody. Yeah. And that doesn't mean that the guy doesn't want the same things that you want or that it's just he a wouldn't lot of accept it's dumping you a lot down of the baggage road. Right. Before you it even doesn't mean, get to know each other. Right. It doesn't mean that he's not okay with those things, but the flag is that you're saying them yeah. immediately. Immediately, totally. yeah. Well, you wrote a whole book called He's Making You Crazy. <laughs> yeah. So, well, in doing that, like in your like, exploring your relationships are there things that like you learned that just sort of uh yeah or that you've learned as you've grown yeah I mean I've I was talking about this exact conversation the other day um with Luke we were discussing on the podcast about um an ex-girlfriend who was just who dumped a lot of really gnarly baggage on him very early on and then they were just make up break up for like four years 
And I used to just like hide my crazy, I, like crazy Kristen doesn't really like reside here anymore. Like she yeah. got buried, you know, many moons ago. I um, love that. We left her on the street. We did. We, <laughs> we, we broke like, bye bitch. <laughs> She's transformed <laughs> slightly. She'll always kind of be there. But also with the book, I've taken the word crazy back because when guys call bitches crazy, it's why we're like passionate because we stand up for ourselves because what? Like, shut up. Oh yeah. No, I, I love you. You're like crazy isn't right. a nice thing to call bitches. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Leave bitches alone. We're not crazy. Well, it's also like, it's, I firmly believe crazy is like, oh, you mean. Well, crazy is two way street. Oh, you mean yeah. I stood up for myself I was while you were being a total right. cock ass? Yeah. yeah. But I'm now a lunatic because you cheated because on me. Because you're a liar and you're lazy. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, you mean I initiated contact? Right. Yeah. You. <laughs> You're a crazy person. Anyways. Yeah. But so since I've been single, like <laughs> I, <laughs> I love have, the laugh. I'm like, <laughs> cause she I just got I've gone out on, a, on a few dates with strangers, which is like never my MO. Like I'm a relationship gypsy. Introduce me to your friend that I've probably met or have been friends with for a while. I'll have sex with him and then hopefully we can date. And then I never have to like meet a stranger. Yeah. Calling them strangers is so funny and spot on. Oh, and yeah. I have stranger danger. Funny. Like nobody so says it like that. Yeah, yeah. But it is like a new person. It's like, Oh, you're a complete stranger. Yeah. Do we have no mutual friends. I literally know nothing about you. But that being said, I jumped on hinge and did go out on some dates with some guys but then I'm tiptoeing around the the main question. It's like, what do you do for a living? And how do you tell a guy who knows nothing about reality television or anything about, you know, what I've done the last decade of my life? Yeah. So for all of these dates, I would just keep being like, so tell me more about you. Tell me more about you. Oh yeah. I have a brother and a sister too. Tell me more about you. And eventually it's like, so like, do you have a job, Kristen? And you're like, well, by the way, and my so entire I, life has been publicly. Uh, right. So on all three said dates, I was just like, well, I'm in entertainment. Well, what does that mean? Well, uh, it's kind of a tricky question. And every single one thought that I was in porn. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, no. So then I just flat out said it. I got canceled two years ago. Take it or leave it. I don't want to talk about this anymore. Please don't Google me. Um, if you want to get to know me, we can do this on our next date. Yeah. And now do you want to have sex? Okay, great. You're like, <laughs> can we get to the thing that I wanted to get to? So I because kind of I'm... did. I've, I have dumped a little baggage, but it's because I feel like I'm taking the route of being like Eminem and 8 Mile, like in the third <laughs> and final rap battle. Like, here's everything you're about to find out about me. <laughs> so I'm just going to own it first. And now you can't come back yeah. and say like, why didn't you tell me? Well, it is also so sticky in like, but I don't lead with like, I take Lexapro every morning, you know? <laughs> yeah. Hi, I'm on a steady diet of and Lexapro I'm not meditation. Control. Yeah. I'm really like gambling. Well, the thing is, is cause you were like, a lead on a reality television series for so long. So walking that sticky ground, trying to meet someone new and going, cause I think we've all, I kind of like this person. I'm, I don't know if anyone, I don't have, I didn't do it in my most recent relationship. I wasn't like, I'm going to Google him and background check them. But yeah. sometimes with the accessibility of someone's, you know, social media, whatever, you're like, I'm going to snoop. Right. And yeah. With you, it's like, I'd rather get ahead of this and let you know, Hey, here's something you might see. Right. So I don't want, because if you have anything that's like going to pop up, because of course, I mean, it can, in this day and age, the worst thing yeah. will pop up if you're even remotely adjacent to entertainment. Right. Because that's what like people glom onto and that's what, you know, clickbait, whatever. So, I mean, it's, yeah, it's just as simple as like, if you don't want to date someone who was in this world and, and would still like to be in that world, then let's just cut our losses like, don't, now. Let's not waste our time. Exactly. That's what's the same. It's, I don't know if you had this prior to like dating Dave, but it's a weird thing with comedian oh, too, yeah. of going, I don't think I had my job on my profile. Uh, Dave was in the audience at a show that I did. So he saw me do stand up and then met me as a person. And that was nice. Yeah. Cause it's like the cat's out of the bag. Yeah. Yeah. Where it's like also being a comedian at a level where it's like, I'm a full-time stand-up comedian, Yeah, but I'm not, you know, I'm not Whitney. I'm not Eliza. I'm not a big You don't have a Netflix comedy. special yet. You know what made me so mad was when I was on Hinge 
And I did have it in my profile because I was a professional stand-up comedian. One guy said to me, he's like, that's the most common job that women have in their profile next to like teacher and nurse. And that made me so mad. Because there's I'm so like, few of us. It yeah. is not most women's <laughs> no. job. Like they're just putting that because they do it as a hobby. They maybe aspire to doing it. They maybe did it fucking once. Yeah. yeah. They did like at an, an open, open mic. mic. Yeah. But they think it sounds cool. And so, yeah. Yeah, so or that was they think it's funny to say that and yeah. they don't even do it at all. But and that's the weird thing is navigating in L.A. because you get all these aspiring a million things. That yeah. was why one time you guys were shitting on that dude on Steph's Hinge because it said he was like a full time comedian or like a professional comedian. And I'm like, I totally get that because so many guys say that they're stand up comics. And I'm like, no, you're not. Well, right. And if you're not a, a female comic, it, how how would we know? You yeah. Know? And Even I, I want to be like, clear. I like, consider myself like a female comedy groupie. Yeah. Like, I love you. <laughs> my friend Rachel O'Brien used to do comedy. I would follow her to every show. I go to Justice shows. I go to Katie's shows. Like, I love female comedy. I love all comedy. But, as, but like as stuff a that non, relates to you more. As a non-comic even knowing as many people as I do in your world, if I met a guy and he told me that he was, I wouldn't know. I do. I wouldn't. I would have no idea. I would have to like ask around. Be like, is he real? And is that's, it I true? get that a lot from friends who, uh, I've gotten that from friends who are not comedians who have matched with comedians. Like, mm -hmm. do you know this guy? But like people going, oh, what do you really do when you say you're a comedian? I do want to like, say just because of what I just said that I... I think that a person can be a comic and ha have a side hustle. I, I don't of think course. that it yeah. has to be like all or your only job. You know what I mean? Cause I did it for 10 years before I finally didn't have to have a day job. Of and I still, I still was a comedian, you know? Absolutely. It's just a weird thing of like, when you bring it up, you never know what kind of response you're going to get where some people will be like, Oh cool. Yeah. But like, what do you really do? Right. Or like, uh, I, when I went on, which is a thing I had, I went on a few dates or like talked to guys and almost went on dates post my last relationship. And then I went on a date with Nate, but I was like, hey, I have a hard out because I have to get to my set at the comedy store mm -hmm. because I am a comedian. And there was never any question after that. Like he hadn't known who I was, but yeah. like he liked comedy and he was like, that's great. And it was easy, but it's just such a weird, any type of entertainment. Yeah. When you're in LA, people are like, are you actually yeah. like legit in this? It's, you know, someone could go on a reality TV star, but they were on like one episode of a weight loss show on TLC in yeah. 2005. And it's like, <laughs> did you just you're say not legit in this? <laughs> le legit in this. Oh, legit in this. I was like, is legit in this a word? I was like, I feel it like I, now. Have, it to, I have to ask about uh, that. I need to know about your legit in this. Put it on the merch. It's new merch. Like, is that a combination of legitimate and indigenous? Yes. <laughs> are, are you? How do you ask both at once? Are you really a Native American? <laughs> Prove your legitimacy. I totally relate to what you were talking about, about being like, don't Google me. And I did ask that when I was when I was on like dating apps, because the first hits are me talking in a funny voice being like, the guy's going to want you to drink the cum. And I'm yeah. like, I can't. I don't want that to be the first thing well, that you see. Like, but at the you, same time, that, it's don't like. Don't you, dude, want to get to know me? Don't you want right. to ask me questions? Right. And and have conversations or do you just want to look up everything about me? Yeah. And then what the hell do we have to talk? And about? honestly, if you are looking for someone yeah. who's going to be, you know, a cute person to have on your arm, to introduce to your family, to take to work functions, like Google away. Cause that's just not going to be me. <laughs> right. you know? I'm going to upset your family yeah. right? <laughs> with the minute they look me up. And Dave's like family is very accepting of me, but I think it takes a special family to be accepting of me of you know? a female comedian you sound like yeah. a serial Who's... killer you're like <laughs> like your dexter you're i mean like, i may as well be <laughs> for a lot of you know it's like a lot of people's worst nightmare yeah well it's also like because publicly the jokes you do and it's also i'm sure for you like publicly the you know the way that you're shown uh falling you know, all those and seasons hammered. on Vanderpump, where they, <laughs> they like made you be like crazy Kristen, yeah. and like that's your character on the show having someone with j enough like patience to get to know you and understanding that like that's not who I am right who I am on stage who you are on tv isn't like that's that's it like that is all like, encompasses it's a character. everything it's a character based like, on thoughts I've had things who I I've am done. yeah <laughs> or like in your case it's how they chose to edit yeah, it's it's one dimension of like a 3d human being yeah there are other pieces it's the funny part yes yeah and it's like I don't want you to sum up 
all of who I am based on like you saw a clip of me in a trade. Yeah, like God knows what they've had of you on that show. Oh, yeah. Literally just getting wasted, falling over, like, you know, all the relationship bullshit that happened. So it's like all of that. Oh, she must not have manners or she must not have been raised well. She must be unintelligent. No. You're like, because they cut one But do you want to watch that when you watch shitty Bravo TV? Probably not. Right. No, you're, like, you're not tuning in for someone who's well mannered and polite. Yeah. And it's like, no, thank you. I'll have a tea. Yeah. How, what would you say? So, for people who maybe are curious, mm-hmm. what percentage of what they would have seen of you is like the total of Kristen, or how accurate was it? I mean, everything that happened happened. Yeah, for sure. Um, but I don't like when, I, when, especially back then. I mean, I haven't been on the show in years, and I started it when I was in my twenties. And I was broke and I was messy and was in a shitty relationship. And you're thrust into the spotlight. Yeah. And we just got drunk every single time we filmed. I'm so glad no one filmed my 20s. You know, every time we filmed, it was like endless amounts of alcohol. And how fun is that when you're in your 20s hanging out with all of your friends and you work at a bar and you're getting flown to Mexico and just you're getting sloppy, paid sloppy, to like sloppy. Yeah. have the fun that we all had in our 20s. Yeah. It's just being filmed. My well, God. But even though it all happened, like we record an hour a week and there are always clips where I'm like, I'm not putting that on my Instagram. You know yeah. what I mean? Even though it's out on audio, she's like, that even can't though, be what Even though sees. I mean it, even though I'm okay with our listeners hearing it, I still don't want that 30 second clip to be how I present myself totally. to the world. And meanwhile, I realized I could probably be a great reality producer because I'm like, <laughs> what's the worst <laughs> clip of me? I'll put that out. So God help us if I were being filmed 16 hours a day while blacked out in oh, my yeah. 20s. I, was... I mean, I can't even imagine. How are you supposed to come out of that unscathed? And yeah. annoyed and irritated and not necessarily, you know, it's it, the the blessing and the curse of reality tv it's like you're forced to have conversations you probably wouldn't want to have and yeah. sometimes that can be really great to confront these demons head on but sometimes like no i don't want to have that conversation and i'm not friends with that person so like don't force me to be to like have this like hey girl yeah. hey buddy and at the end of the day like it's not the Kristen show it's yeah. a cast ensemble they have a story to tell yeah and if the the kinder, sweeter, loyal parts of me do not fit that story that they're telling. Shopping then they're not going to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, you I'm never know with stuff it. like that. The amount of right. stuff that you don't see that they like edit. I would love to find, and there's no way to do this poll, how many people who were villains in, you know, Bachelor, Bachelorette, all yeah. these shows had no idea they were going to be the villain. Like, yeah. And also the cast members were like, wow. Like, I would love to, if you looked at all of them, go, didn't see that coming in the edit. Yeah. Because I bet there's a bunch. There's I a show that I love. It's called Unreal. And I think they only oh. had like two oh, or three seasons so on Hulu. Three. And oh. it's. Um, it's a fictional show, but it's based on like the behind the scenes of The Bachelor. Season That's- one of Unreal was by far the best. Yes. I mean, and it was so obviously it was it was blown up right more right, but um, also very spot on. Yeah. Well, as someone who's even, been there, that's crazy. I um, ran a show with four other female comics when I lived in Chicago, and there was someone who was interested in potentially having us do a pilot for a reality show and did like the, you know, they were like, okay, now will you say, they wish they could be us. They blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, you're like creating a story already where like I'm a bitch, Mm -hmm. but I'm not. And that's not how we talk to each other. Like that's not what's happening here. My favorite thing in Vanderpump, like once they realized we were... I, I understand the assignment. I know yeah. how to make a good show. Right. I know like, what my and you were like, is. I'm willing to lean in. But then it's like, oh, Kristen, we need wild lines from you. I don't know what this is pertaining to. Right. I just know I need to go really quickly and do this audio and say, I don't know, we'll make something up. Like, I mean, she's a real bitch. <laughs> yeah. And then it's like, okay, do it different way. Oh, she's a real bitch. She's like, yeah. I don't even know who they're going to use this. Yeah. She's a real bitch. <laughs> I and have that's no like, idea who I'm talking to, talking about. Yeah. I don't know what it was this back in June. Uh, is it a stranger? Is it a customer? Is it Lisa fucking Vanderpump? Am I talking about one of my best friends? I have no clue. And that's where one that's of my favorite used. things about watching The Bachelor. I watch all of like oh, the Bachelor I can, shows. Same. 
And they'll do the talking head where the person's like, this is crazy. Yeah. And I'm like, that has nothing to do right. with whatever The thing is I do happening. like about Bachelor, though, is that they do their, like, their bobblehead confessional interview moments, like, in the moment. It's not a pickup that they do in the studio, like, oh, really? six months later. They pull later. you aside. Right. They, they're, yeah, I mean. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, because they're in Mexico. Like, yeah. For, like, for at least our show, for the show I used to be on. We film X amount of months. We're done filming. We have a small break. Oh, they edit then, it and then they have you then come to go Once they start editing the episode, then they're like, okay, come in and do your interviews. And they're like, okay. So we're going back to June 2nd. And I'm like, what the fuck was June 2nd? This is now so September, great. October, November. Right, right. And I'm trying to get back in this headspace of how I felt in That's- this moment. And I barely doing... remember what I wore yesterday. I yeah. feel like, I mean, I would immediately <laughs> I get fired from breakfast. something like that because <laughs> I would like intentionally make myself look completely different. <laughs> After oh, the, like four months had passed, they're like, why in this clip is she 40 pounds heavy? Yeah. <laughs> Just <laughs> one clip of you being like, she's a real bitch. And you're like, did, did she eat herself? <laughs> so you mentioned, did she eat her? <laughs> you mentioned, um, it's like a world you maybe still want to be in. Like, yeah. what do you, do you have a vision of what that looks like or like what you think you'd like to do moving forward in the TV world or just like you're open to whatever? Yeah, I'm pretty open. I, I really like the idea of a cast ensemble. I, I love what we were doing without this bullshit restaurant as a backdrop. Yeah. Just like, like let us evolve. Yeah. Let you, you, it's also funny because it's like, in reality, if, if people watching are supposed to be like, the reality is this group of friends is continuing yeah. to, it's like, what, they're, you're all still bartenders? Right, exactly. It's like, like, come on. Let but us- like, we all really, most of us really do still hang out. and Yeah, show that. And, but we're like growing up, but it doesn't mean all that drama, quote unquote. Think about all of your friend groups and your relationships, just any of us. Like there's always some shit going on that is relatable and interesting. And it doesn't have to be that person fucked that person's boyfriend or whatever it is. You know, it doesn't have to be these wild cheating scandals and like just messy, messy, messy. Like it's just as interesting. We still get drunk. We yeah. still, you know, like my friends have kids now or like have babies. Like they still get a babysitter so they can have a date night. Yeah. They still have people over at their house. And it's like relatable sitting. now to people who are the, like, who have grown up with those people. Right. Cause it's like, yeah, show what it's like to like, I mean, even on this show, it's like, we're talking about like you going off birth control and like thinking about like trying to like yeah. get pregnant down the line and like the differences of people being like, oh, I'm so scared of that. And like, yeah, that's great. Do you think you'd ever do like kooky unscripted, like game show, cooking show, home rebuilding? I've always wanted to do something on HGTV. Yeah. But, yeah. but yeah, I mean, I think that would just be so fun. Well, but you're not forever though. No, but as a, I mean, you, I just like to entertain. And I think that's why I like, I'm taking the pod, like, especially what I love about doing this podcast is like, I don't have to answer to anybody. Yeah. And people really are going to get to hear the real me, not the person you saw on the show. Yeah. Well, the person who's being fed lines. Right. Congratulations so much on your Thanks. new podcast. It's been such a blast having you. Thank you for Thanks, joining guys. us. Yeah. Really quick. Can you tell everyone the name of the podcast? Because uh, it, it's dropping in two days and you can go uh, subscribe and hear the trailer right now. So yes, subscribe. please do that. Um, it's called Sex, Love and What Else Matters with Kristen Doty. Yay. So go follow Kristen. Go subscribe to that podcast. I can't wait to hear it. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, guys. It's been a blast. Um, Where are you going to be? Oh, I'm going to be good question. I'm (laughs) going to be in Sacramento, December 9th and 10th. And in January 12th through the 14th, I will be in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And February 3rd and 4th, I am in New Smyrna Beach at Madcaps Comedy Club. Holy crap. Way to know your dates. Um, I will (laughs) be in Bloomington, Minnesota at the House of Comedy December 1st through 5th. Uh, December 14th through the 18th, I'm going to be at the House of Comedy in Vancouver, British Columbia. Damn. Um, December 22nd through 27th, I'm going to be visiting my family in Wisconsin. <laughs> and then out. January 26th through uh, 28th, 29th. I'm going to be at Zany's in Chicago. Oh, you got those dates rescheduled. Chicago. You got those dates rescheduled. Come Thank you so much, Brandon Berger, my agent. He's the best. Brandon is the best. Brandon, I love you. I want to just hold you in my arms and be your, I just, I was, you're the best. I just want to give you a big old <laughs> hug. Thanks for joining us. I made it weird. All Have right, a bye. great week. Bye. 
follow the podcast at Slobs Pod. Follow me at Lara Bites. Follow me at Steph Tolev. Follow me everywhere on the internet at JMS Comedy.